Hey guys, I'm back. I'm back from TwitchCon. It's 1026 balance patch note. It's 6 a.m. Let's just get straight into this. I'm not going to lie to you. We're probably going to be pausing a little bit, but that's fine because you know what? It's the new patch. Everything's kind of cool, interesting. Hopefully we get something to kind of, t I guess, to kind of lead us or give us something to be looking forward to while we're waiting for Yuffie and I think coming out after the balance patch or the, the maintenance tonight. Not balance patch. I apologize. Anyways, let's just get into it really quick. Okay, so this is for 10.25, 10.26. Okay, so if there wasn't an, like a thousand things that you already have to use for your energy, uh, Advent's coming back, which is fine. Um, I don't really know if anyone's going to be doing Advent this time around, aside from just the initial rewards. I know some people, like myself included, tried to... I guess like farm a little bit of advent more even after getting the initial rewards just because the modification gems and stuff are so nice but with rift oh the gear is really tough uh, or like justifying getting the the, the gear versus the jet like you know the charms and and kind of justifying what's better will be a little bit difficult here i'll probably do like a like a further analysis video on which one you should be doing if it's worth it for you to do one or the other but in any case we also as you see here see three new heroes and oh God, finally, short hair supremacy. Oh my God, I, 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 okay. I know it's just me. I know it's just me. I, I know they look like a little bit plain. They're not like the most insane looking characters ever. They just kind of look like pirates or like rogues essentially. But it, that has its charm. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for this design. Personally, I really like short hair characters, and they look really cute. So, also, you know, the husbando's there. Uh, Equal love to Husbandos too. He also looks pretty K-poppy, and you know, K-pop is kind of in right now. Wow, that was only a five-second pause. Okay, uh, all right. So we also have the EE, which is crazy because I can't believe I think Aruka just got a buff re kind of semi recently. So I guess they are acknowledging the fact that they do want her to be a bit stronger. I'm curious what they're gonna release in here. Obviously, we can just see, but Ken. An exclusive equipment is also really goofy. Uh, I guess they're really trying to hammer in the whole, like, we want Arena, GVG, and PvE to be good. Because that's kind of where you see these characters. You don't really see Arunka in PvP, and you definitely don't see Ken in PvP either. So these equ exclusive equipments are probably not even aimed specifically at, you know, PvP changes, but more so PvE. And thank God, we finally got the the championship ring. How, how long has it been since the end of the ECM World Championship? Okay, anyways, whatever. Okay, UI improvements as well. Okay, so not much of a pause, but this is just so we'll see it. We'll see it in 1026 or like the I guess tomorrow until like the week after, and then that's when it'll open. Okay, whatever. We've seen this before. Nothing super big of a chain or nothing super different. Dude, she looks so cute. Oh my god, this is like Penelope. This is like Penelope and Juno all over again. God, they're so cute. I swear it. If Smogate doesn't make this character, like, either get, like, a specialty change or be good at, be, at least be good at something in, P, you know, in PvE. Make it, make it, like, Lilka or something. At least let me see her in an expedition or, I don't know, ugh, she's fire. I don't really want to farm Golem anymore. But, like, give, give her a use somewhere. Please, 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 I'm begging. It doesn't even have to be PvP. I promise you I will use it. Even if it's not PvP. Okay. Uh, Amiki? Dude, Amiki... Like, this is another character that looks really good. She kind of looks like, um... Why can't I remember her name? It's gonna bother me so much. She's the three-star... Ort! Ort! Like, I don't even think half the half of the people, like, even remember that Ort is a character. Wait, this is a... Wait, she's a water warrior? Wait, she's... Why didn't she just have... <laughs> why didn't she just have blue hair? Okay, whatever. I mean, I kind of thought she was a grass thief or something, or that's kind of what she looks like. Kind of curious what she's going to be. I mean, uh, these kind of... Again, these are three stars, unfortunately, guys, and especially since we probably aren't going to see their kit for a little while. You can kind of assume that these characters are sitting on the wait list for specialty changes, which is another thing that I think most people already understand at this point. For some reason, specialty changes are kind of just on the back burner right now. I don't know what it is, but they should definitely get stuff rolling because these are like uh, some of the the nicer looking three stars and there's already plenty of three stars that haven't even gotten specially changed. <coughs> Gloomy Rain, <coughs> Soothe In, <coughs> uh, Lilka. Anyways, that being said, Lilka maybe maybe a bit on the iffy side because Lilka's already pretty good, but hopefully these characters are usable just like, you know, just like Lilka. 
right? That, that would be great. Even for PvE. This looks like, he, this guy looks like an Ezra. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with it, but he's, I guess he's like Grass Thief, which is why the other lady couldn't be a Grass Thief, which is fine. Um, And we paused kind of, you know, I guess nicely right on top of the Ken EE. So it gives him 12 crit chance, increased, def uh, increased death break or defense, uh, decrease it. God, I don't know why they name it. The increase to his S1's, uh, Decreased defense effect by 10% is pretty nice. I think that puts him at either a 75 or 85% uh, death break on S1 now. Helpful, obviously, if you're going to be doing stuff like uh, Rift or um, if you're going to be doing Ancient Inheritance. God, the content is so old at this point. We haven't done anything except for Rift in so long now. I just kind of, it's kind of blurring. But wow, this S2 giving a dual attack with the ally with the highest attack when you use Celestial Kick is actually really crazy. Because if you think about it, if you get Vigor and you S2, that's a guaranteed defense break into a dual attack from the highest attack target. I don't know if they've ever done this before. This is like, I mean, obviously Adventurer Ross has, you know, the mitigation or like, you know, the... Uh, the shield in the back line, but this is a guaranteed defense break, assuming, you know, assuming you, you have vigor up. So if you do like C Lilius plus Ken, wow, <laughs> not bad, not bad. And then it's skill three. It recovers the health of the ally when using skill three. Um, okay. I mean, healing on S3 is, I guess, whatever. That's, that's not really the one that I think people are going to be focusing on. Unless if you're really concerned, I guess, with, like, your healing and rift. But, in general, you could usually make Ken tanky enough that he won't, you know, get one shot or anything anyways. I think the real winners of this, because I think this is a great S, this is a great EE, to be clear. This is perfect. Everyone already understands, I mean, Advent's even the name, like, insinuating PvE. Like, this is a character that is now just destined to be in some sort of PvE atmosphere or a kind of pve niche so knockout increasing defense break chance great for people that want more consistent death breaks and then the dual attack is also really nice because in all honesty if you get an extra hit with kane or jack or something like that that that's pretty good oh i just realized as i'm saying this you can't dual attack and rift still would probably would probably be pretty good in something like ancient inheritance or you know if you're doing golems whatever you want to call it or even pvp who knows who knows that's pretty good though Um, okay, so Arunka 10 speed EE is nice. I don't think she'll ever end up being something like a Zahak one shot nuker where she's at like that 260, 270, 280 range. So this is basically just giving you 20 free stats so that you can get more HP or attack. Um, increased bleed chance. Bleed is unfortunately probably one of the worst buffs or debuffs in the game right now. There isn't any real synergy with bleeds. Like, even Kane himself has no reason to even care about the bleeds, aside from, like, the way that his kit works. Like, bleed itself doesn't do that much damage. Increases damage of S3. That That's fine, I guess. Like, 10% increase in addition to speed. That's effectively, what, like, 30% free stat about, right? So, it's like, uh, if you got, like what, like maybe 300 to 400, 500 extra attack. That's pretty good in and of itself. I think uh, a lot of people are kind of upset with Arunka right now because she should be one-shotting things that sometimes she doesn't one-shot and maybe this opens up opportunities for her to do even more damage. Who knows? 20, 20 speed or 20 stat plus 10% damage increase could be significant. And finally, we have her, her final skill 3 EE, which is increases the caster by 30% when using a thrashing in the prairie. So if I'm not mistaken, I think what that means is that you can run... Sorry, I'm just opening up the thing real quick. I think if you have Merciless Glutton on, I think it pushes, her, it pushes themselves, right? Oh, no, 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 it doesn't, it, so, okay, so you can't use it by yourself, I just wanted to confirm on that, uh, but in general, like, a 30% CR push, like, if you are using someone like a mid with her, or if you have someone that can give her extra, like, extra push, either with, like, Sasha Thanes, or just a general push-up, you know, any character you can think of, Moon Bunny, etc., 30%, 30% CR is pretty decent, um, in all honesty, it's probably going to come, it's probably going to be a toss-up between the the two skill three EEs. Do you want more damage? Or do you want more skill push? But I think I'm leaning more towards the skill push because there's probably a lot of people that will just run her a little bit slower 
guarantee the one shot and then 30% CR push after you one shot an enemy is kind of strong. So really good EEs. I'm actually kind of surprised. They're not like the most game changing EEs and these characters aren't going to be like immediately the most meta characters you've ever seen in your entire life. Maybe, maybe Ken, like the Ken thing is kind of interesting, but you kind of need like Conqueror Lilius or a character to give vigor before you can really make that work. However, just in general, I think damage increase, free speed, and for Ken, having a pretty game-changing addition in, into his kit, which is a defense, like a, a an ignore ER defense break into dual attack, kind of, kind of crazy. Okay, and now obviously what we have here is like the, uh, the E7 World Championship ring. Everyone's going to get it for free. Max it. Congratulations, guys. If you're an early, mid- or like even a late game player, you're probably going to max this no matter what. Everyone uses this ring, like maybe not as easily as some other pieces of gear that you could get, but especially if you're an earlier mid game player. And I mean, what am I even saying? Even for me, like I'm probably going to use this on someone, whether it's someone like Landy or Sharklet or I don't know, someone you'll find a use for this piece of gear. Congratulations to Marguerite. Happy for you. This ring looks amazing. It actually looks pretty cool and it's in game. So it also, you know, it has his name on it or something. I think it should be. Yeah, his name is on there right at the top. Congratulations. Good stuff. Thank you for the free gear. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, so sorry. Am I? It's available until May 23rd. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I just wanted to confirm. It, I don't think it says when we get it, though. Okay, UI improvement. Added the register max ingredients. These are, like, nice UI changes. Like, in a sense. But this is not more annoying than the bug that's happening right now where when you try to upgrade a piece of gear, it puts you at 14 instead of 15. Or like when, you, when you're crafting gear and you accidentally lock something, you can't unlock it from that screen. You have to go back into your inventory and unlock it. Like, who was complaining about this specific, like what? I mean, it's 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 well appreciated though. Like, it's it's nice. I didn't really think I had that big of a deal or that big of a problem with it. The Stina is really nice, by the way, guys. I'm assuming that they're putting the Stina here because you know it's going to be Advent soon. So if you want to get, you know, this is probably a bad omen. They just did this with, you know, they just did this with uh, Tamron and Haste. They basically gave us like two really important characters or two really good characters for like an upcoming PVE piece of content. And I'm assuming we're probably going to need Destina. They're going to over debuff or something like that. Get ready. Ha ha. Wallet time. Wallet time. Ha ha. K-Ron. K-Ron seems unusual. I, I doubt K-Ron's going to. I bet you Bologna is going to be really good, guys, because why else would they? Why else would they include a grass, a grass ranger right before a, a blue PVE event? So as always, guys. I mean, if the if the track record, you know, if the you know history shows that they're willing to put content that is necessary, like you you know they're willing to put up banners that you're going to need for like the next upcoming content. So whether or not you're going to need Bologna and Destina is still up to debate. But uh, don't be surprised if you know Bologna's defense break or her high scaling damage on S1 or Destina's cleanse or you know healing on S2 was important. Get ready, ha ha. Wee, wee, wee. I love I love pulling for non-limited characters for once a once a year content. Okay, what else do we? Oh, is that it? Okay. Um. All right. If you guys didn't know, I mean, I guess I could just kind of give like a quick rundown of the Mystic Summon rotation. If you did or didn't know, Abyssal Euphine looks extremely unique. Uh, that's the best way I could put it. No one I've talked to even has like a really firm grasp of how they want to build Euphine, how they're going to build Euphine. If you want, you can leave a comment in the in the, in the section or you can leave your thoughts in the comment section down below how you're going to build Euphine. But don't build Bad Cat Armin. That that character needs a buff, Smalagate. Please buff that character. That character is kind of unusable. Not going to lie. Anyways. Coming, you know, this is coming after the event. I don't know if this was announced already or not, but Commander Pavel being on the coin shop rotation is so nice. I know so many people that want to play Cleave or want to do something funny with Commander Pavel, but he just, I don't know if he's even had like a rerun ban. I don't think he's had a rerun banner, but I don't know if he's been in the coin shop rotation or some other 
mystic banner thing in any case commander pavel in my opinion is really good for arena i like him a lot uh he's very clean and simple especially for you know people that use characters like ran knock wall herself can also pair very well with commander pavel i like him a lot he's a little bit of rng as you get higher and higher and he's a little tough to pick an rta but for people that are starting out and doing like arena or guild wars and they somehow have like a character that can crit or defense break and they also i mean if you're building haste right now haste is also kind of funny with commander pavel if you want to use commander pavel with haste because uh, i know a bunch of people are building haste right now that character works pretty well with commander pavel desert jewel bazaar is i mean he still counters all the barrier characters to like to some extent uh he's he's seen like a little less play right now but still a, still not a terrible option especially into fallen cecilia which is the next character i think F fallen cecilia i think a, a, a couple of you guys consider to be kind of weak i don't know how much i agree with that i think fallen cecilia is still pretty solid when people try to do really outrageous uh or play really disrespectfully and pick stuff like sid i think fallen cecilia is really great at mitigating stuff like that or if people start to play like uh really aggressive cleave and they don't have any anchors and stuff like that i think fallen cecilia is still pretty usable especially if you're like an old timey player that still has your mullet or upgraded maybe in this day and age you can get away with something like lrk or arrow nowadays but i don't think she is so bad that she's in the same tier as someone like sba or you know uh, haste you know uh, but down below, I mean, I think buying buying these characters from the coin shop rotation or buying characters with like the covenant coin shop things is really, really not worth it. You can get all these characters off of the covenant banner. So Kise, Alencia, Celine, though all three of these characters kind of have their uses. Like, you know, Celine is pretty good at dealing with teams that don't go fast and you want to be able to reset them and then do a bunch of damage. It's totally fine. She's pretty good at that alencia is pretty good when you're fighting against characters like you know lrk or you know you're fighting against uh any blue units that are i don't know they have health she does pretty well against characters like shu uh, i like picking her into karina on occasion but otherwise eh, i'm not picking her every game but she is she does definitely have her have her use cases none of this really matters though and especially with celine even though celine has like a use case where she can like counter certain people that are playing disrespectfully with openers or characters that you design uh, blah, 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 or characters that use non-attack skills in general it none of this matters guys you're not going to be spending 64 coins on this is that it okay well anyways we'll see more details in the announcements on stove like i'll like i mean i'll link this video in like a, in the in the video description so you can go find it and also get like the the stove link i guess or you guys can just check it but anyways guys that's going to be it for this video if you enjoyed make sure to like comment turn the notification bell turn the notification bell and subscribe i apologize i'm a little winded and tired from my trip uh make sure to check out all my socials uh all the different platforms in general guys i think the patch is pretty cool uh i mean the EEs are a bit of like a tiny content nudge. It's not exactly what I wanted, and I'm not super happy that I have to spread more energy away from Rift now into Advent. But for people that do need modification gems and want like the early pulls and stuff, this is your time to stop farming Hunt or stop farming farming Rift probably. Complete the Advent, get like the free summons, and enjoy probably your three-star Elson because this game sucks. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you all next time. Adios.